Hi, my name is Amanda Rocha. I am an estate planning and probate attorney in California. Today I am going to discuss with you what assets are included on the inventory and appraisal form that you submit for probate. Before I get into that, I want to give you my contact information. You can find me on my website, www.amandarochalaw.com. You can comment down below if this platform allows you to do that, or you can find me on my website. I'm sorry, you can find me on social media at Amanda Rocha Law. Uh, so the reason we're talking about this is because I recently talked to you about probate at the 30,000 foot view level, and I mentioned an inventory and appraisal form. I want to get a little bit into what that is, but I am not going to explain every detail on how to fill it out. Basically, it's a form that the executor or personal representative will use to submit to the court all of the property that is going to be included in probate. That excludes certain things, but you're going to count what was owned at the time of death, okay? What is not included is joint tenancy property owned with another person in joint tenancy, any community property, um, any property held in a trust regardless of the kind of trust, uh, any payable on death accounts, bank accounts that are payable on death, any kind of beneficiary accounts like your 401k, your retirement plan, or life insurance that are listed with beneficiaries who are not your uh, the decedent's estate, none of those count. And there are other exceptions too, like a motor vehicle exception, mobile home exception. There are other exceptions, but just for the general um, knowledge, you're going to exclude all of that. So it's basically property owned by this person, separate property, not community property, owned by this person that isn't being passed through another vehicle, um, such as a trust. And this form is two pages long, and then you have attachments. One attachment is going to include all items that have a value that's easily um, ascertained that don't require appraisal and those will all be listed. The second form is going to have real estate and other items that need the um, court's appraiser to actually go through and appraise. Personal property on the other hand will be included on the cover letter that you submit and it's really going to be up to the personal representative to basically take the value of all of the things that are owned in people's homes um, prior to their death and use the assign a value that you would use to sell it at a yard sale or sell it to someone on like Facebook Marketplace for example or Craigslist something like that and the judge is typically going to take their word for it unless it just seems completely out of the norm. So if you said they have $3,500 of personal property, they'll usually take the, their value for that. And then everything else that needs to be mentioned, um, you know, checking accounts that are owned separately, that kind of thing, money market accounts, um, and then, you know, real property and everything else, all of that will be valued up later on and included in the totals of this person's assets when paying creditors, when paying the attorney's fees, executor's fees, appraiser's fees, and then eventually paying the beneficiaries of the will or the heirs at law for intestate succession. If you have any questions about this, please, please feel free to contact me. I practice probate in California. Um, if you're in another state, You'll need to contact a, an attorney in that state. Uh, you can find me on my website, www.amandarochalaw.com. You can comment down below, or you can find me on social media and send me a direct message. I'm at Amanda Rocha Law. Thank you.